Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, the toughest task for anybody in seeing the home morning service for someone so beloved is Eric. We have 10 family members coming. And we have a capacity, we have a capacity now. Now, I know everybody wants to pay respects. And if you came, and you're either not a member of the family or a member of the church, we ask that they be on the side until new space is made available. Um, Eric is beloved. And unfortunately, you, if you came, you've already paid your respects. If you view the body, share your time with the family. Now, I know who that Salemites are, and I know who they are not, and I don't definitely want to get an argument with somebody I don't know, <laughs> but I got to accommodate 10 family members, so I need 10 people who have already paid your respects, if you please help us out, help a light-skinned boy out from North Jersey. <laughs> And don't know better but to ask. If you're not a member of the family, how many? Seven now? I need seven seats. Three have already accommodated us. Unfortunately, I cannot put anyone in the balcony. I need seven seats. The family just arrived. They're coming in, and we're not going to stop them from coming in. But you've already paid your respects. We love you. We appreciate you. We are being streamed live on um, YouTube channel. And the information, I don't know if it's on the program. Look up Celebration of Life, Eric Stone. And you should be able to find it that way. I'm a simple dude. I just do Facebook. Just learned how to do Zoom. 
I just break the Bible in front of the screen and just start preaching. I don't know anything else. The Lord's on my side. So now, as some housekeeping rules. We can't place some family over here now. So if you're trying to move folks, we have space here. And we'll let the ushers do that. We don't want the family to worry about who's not sitting down. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got, it. You got people in place. Don't worry about it. You got it. Pastor Tina is a we have a conversation. And if there's one thing that's under attack in the church, um, the process is under attack. Order is under attack. And uh, I'm so grateful that I have a group of people today who just absolutely love me. How many do we need, Angie? You good? I know, I just don't want the crush to be in my area because they are coming from out of town. Even though they're family, that doesn't mean that you have to be tight like that. Y'all can do whatever you want to do at the recaps, but we're separating here. Now, the proper wearing of the mask is over your nose. Um, if you have a breathing problem, and you don't have a doctor's note, you probably should have given up your seat. But I see wonderful people who are doing a, a fine job, especially this young lady. I commend her for coming. She has her hair on and her mask on properly. And it, it's funny how people who probably have a legitimate excuse can do the right thing, and other people can fight that. The only way we win is we win together. Amen. Amen. All right. We got the church. I don't know whether you know it or not. I don't know if you came to cry. We got to have church today. I said we got to have church today. Amen. All right. I'll give you about three minutes to situate yourselves. If you're in the back and you'd like to come in, you just sign in. To my left, your right. My left, your right. Not the center. My left, your right. And try to come into view, I believe. If you'd like to view, you can come down this left aisle. Would you just like to be seated? I see you, Angie. How many? Angie's trying to gain somebody's attention over here. One of the ushers. Praise God. Thank Praise Praise God. Final viewing, but we have to get to that that place in this service uh, as expeditiously as possible. For anyone that would like to view our dear Deacon Eric Stone, you can come now. Maybe you're not going to stay for the final viewing. You can come forward at this time. At this time, for we are about to begin. Services of honor to the one and only Deacon Eric Stone. I can't believe I'm saying this. Praise the Lord. 
to the program, there is a final June, so we'll get to that as expeditiously as possible, but I'm going to ask the undertakers if they would come forward, if we would release them to the middle aisle, Angie, if you can remove the restraint and allow the undertakers to come up the middle so that they can help us. The word of the Lord says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house. So many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Is the church up in the air? You can respond to the word, no problem. And we know that all things work. How many of you know that? Together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be thy place. O oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? I sting. O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give God a hand of praise in his house. I said, let's give God praise in his house. I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his home. Help me. Leave man. 
So I'm going to ask you to come. This is our beloved brother of this brother in the ministry. And it would be befitting that one of his brethren in the deacon board would come and give us the prayer of comfort. You don't have to change that. That's good right there. And then as you leave, just take off. Uh, that. Thank you. Good morning, folks. Good morning. 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 Good Dear Father God, I didn't know that God, I didn't know that right now, Father God. Dear God, listen to the name of the God, first and dear God, Father. We call it more, dear God, how's the power of this time, dear God, Father? How's the name of God, dear God, that they be stronger, dear God, in the name of the Father? Dear God, I'm a dear God, Father. This is what we have, they have a blessing, dear God, Father God. We're coming together, dear God, let's do it with your name. And the praise will give you thanks for this young man. But he can still let God give it up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, I remember that God we've been here this morning, Father God. Father, give us time some prayer, Father God. Without God, you know, you know everything that you know best, Father God. Oh God, Father God, at this time, we have to continue going, then God, we have to pray, God, Father. We have to pray, Amen. Amen. Y'all didn't mind that West Indian accent, did you? It was so beautiful to hear. Uh, we thank God, thank you for us. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, at this time, our minister, Annette Harris, is coming to read us our Old and our New Testament scriptures. And um, I see Minister Dale, James Dale is here. Okay, leave the coat as you leave. As you leave, leave the coat behind. I think I can fit that. I think I can work that out. And they haven't seen that where I go, so it's going to be all right. If you just leave that behind. We're going to do double duty today, sir. And I thank you for your service in the ministry all over this world. You've been wonderful. You're going to come immediately behind her with our first selection. And then you're going to give us our sermonic selection uh, just before the preached word, if you don't mind. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I need somebody to clap their hands in here. I know we're in a great father, great grandfather, great um, son, a great um, brother to many, but we got to get some life in here. Amen. Amen. I know we all um, have questions and everything. I know that we're saying why now and why, but God makes no mistakes. Amen. Amen. So we are going to continue the service because I know on the program it said hold on celebration. So if you was at a true celebration, whether you're in the spirit or out of the spirit, you will be clapping your hands. You will be giving God to glory. Let's keep it real. If you was up in the club and your song came on, you would be jumping on the dance floor. God, we teach you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies today a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto your Lord and Savior God. Amen. To God be the glory. We are all hurting, but I refuse to be sad on today. I'm going to celebrate everyone today. Amen. I'm going to celebrate everyone today. Amen. He deserves a worthy celebration. Hallelujah. Hey, God. I don't need God. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear? Will the earth be removed, as though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad. The city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles, and of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and the right earth. The heathen shall reign. The kingdoms removed. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. 
The Lord of hosts is with us, and God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolation has made in the earth. He maketh boards to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the back and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Amen. Then we're going to read the New Testament. First Thessalonians 4 starts with, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not to, I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you study to be quiet, and do your own business, and to work with your own hands, and be commanded of you, that you may walk honestly towards them that are without, and they ye may have left of none. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and that he rose again, even so them also which shall is in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Amen. We know that God's word is already blessed. Let us not be here, but let us be doing of the Lord. I have a song. Yes, sir. Good day.
and they're talking about the draft coming up, we would be talking like that. We never talk Bible, we talk sports. And it was his relationship with I and mine with him, I'm going to treasure and miss um, for these coming years. Well, you know the story. We wound up at Beth Salem. The Lord has blessed us. And I've met some family and friends that I did some cousins I didn't know I had on this side of heaven. And you know, us apostolic believers, somehow somebody built a wall before we were even born that separated us. But God is putting this thing all back together. What a mighty God we serve. And he was one of those networks, those connections that I'm so grateful to have met in his life. I'm going to miss him. And I don't want to cry. I'm going to miss him. One of us, Tina and I, was objective when we came in. We knew that it was a church that needed to come together. And my objective was to make sure that everybody stayed together and nobody leave us. My father in law said, as a pastor, you're a bus driver. People are going to get off, and people are going to get on. I thought that applied to people just going to other churches. I never thought in my lifetime that I would lose a Tanya and an Eric. Amen. Nobody prepares you for this kind of loss. And so, all of us are here because we love him and them. Uh, so, on that note, thank you so much for allowing me just a few moments to speak my truth and tell you how wonderful this man is. And you know it already. Give God a hand for the life of Jesus Christ. That's good. He's affectionately known. That's good. That's good. And he looked when he, before they closed it, he looked like he could have sat up and start serving around here. He don't even look like he's gone. He looks good. And he, I'll see you on the other side. Trust me. Leave me a spot there so we can sit under the tree by the river and we can talk sports. I'll tell you how the Yankees won five more championships in the Mets tonight. <laughs> and the Dallas Cowboys will win two more Super Bowls for the Giants, too. Now somebody's going to come up and come behind me and fix all of that. Uh, but I get the last laugh with the mic. All right, we're going to move patiently along. In this order, we're going to have the acknowledgement of cards. We can't read them all. Uh, from Minister Bernita Myers. Um, we're going to have life reflections. Our Deacon Williams is not here. The life reflections are going to come from the church. Hopefully, Pastor T will be up here by this time. Um, if not, we will choose someone of our liking to come up. Just change that for her. Thank you. And then we'll have a friend, Stephen Chandler. Are you here? Okay, so when you see um, someone from the church come up, you can just line up right next to Angie. So I don't have to come back up and get you to so just change the mic cover. And then finally, we'll have the family. I'm going to get out of the way. So we'll have in this order, or whatever uh, they're choosing of the family, you need Justine and Naya. Justin. Justin Brownspell and Naya. Forgive me. I brought the wrong glasses. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to forgive my pastor because he knows I'm not Bonita. Come on, sis. <laughs> I love him to death. But it's okay. God gives us time. We all need a time to read. Quiet time for reflection. We swim through the memories and come to grips with what has happened. We all need a time for tears. Not for the one who is now at peace in heaven. But for ourselves, as we realize that things will never be the same. You need Justin Naya and the Titus of Babylon. We all need a time to be. We all need a time to just be when we can open ourselves to God and let the reassurance of everlasting love start to heal our broken hearts. Praying for the few and wishing you peace. Love always. Robin can be a sit down.
Well, ultimately matters is not the size of our mountains, but the strength of our mountain movers. Both buildings are prayers for you and your grandchildren. Miss, uh, this is for Elder Brown. Pray you will be encouraged during this difficult time as you see God do mighty things. Allen Cathedral, a senior citizen residence. A time for comfort and caring, a time for sharing, warm memories, a time for honoring a wonderful life. We love you and your children and your dad. Always greet us with a smile. Greeted us with a smile. Offered your help in any way you could. Even as we, all, as we moan, we can remember the good times and be comforted by love and celebrate a life well lived with deepest sympathy for Alan Cathedral Senior Citizen Residents. When you love, when you lose your dad, you lose a good friend too. Hope that a lifetime of warm, loving memories will help ease your sadness thinking of you. From Mrs. Marks from Alan Cathedral Senior Residents. From Refuge of a house of Church of Christ to the family of every star. Grace and peace be unto you. We're standing with you during this time of great endurance. Our deepest prayer is for consolation and renewed strength at the transition of every star. As a Christian, we, with the Bible in hand, survey the world scene. He's aware that God is in the shadows of history and that he has a plan. We, the soldiers, are privileged a glimpse into a final battlefield. Christ is triumphant, and we, the soldiers, are assured of victory. Let us march, no matter what we face. Give us his love and power. We, we are the heading towards a glorious climax. The future is the hands of one who is preparing something better than the eye has seen or ears has heard entered into the heart of a man to conceive. In love of our Lord Jesus Christ, Bishop Ronald H. and Dr. Phyllis B. Carter in the Congregation of Retro Refuge, the Palestine Church of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Naya, Justin, and Unique and family. It is with our deepest sympathy and tenderness of heart that we send you these words to express to you in a feeble way. Our sincere sympathy for you and the death of your loving father, Deacon Everett Stone. We are hoping that they will, in some degree, give you comfort and cheer in such dark hours as these which are yours at this time. The passing of your father is the will of God, and yet there is a human tie that has been broken that leaves the heart in agony and pain. You must find comfort and consolation in the words of the Apostle Peter, who said, Cast your burdens upon him because he cares for you. First Peter 5 and 7. Lift up your head and be strong, knowing you did what you could through life for her comfort, ease, peace until the end. God saw. And he knew knows, therefore, we command you to heaven, who is able to comfort and cheer, and will dry up tears and heal your broken heart. If you will put your away away from your faith in him. As we are praying for you, you must also pray for a time and prayer will bring relief. May God your hope and look up to the hills and wins come your help. May God bless you and give you the strength and courage. Sympathy is yours, Reverend Darrell Fennell, and the Deliverance Baptist Church. Quintus Stowe and family, it is with deepest sympathy and tenderness of the heart that we send you these words to express you in the feeble ways and to send sympathy in the death of your loving son, Deacon Eric Stowe. We are hoping that we will in some degree give you confidence in such dark hours as these which are 
yours at this time. The passing of your son is the will of God. And yet it is human time that has been broken and you lay the heart in agony pain. You must confront and consolations of words of the apostle Peter, who says, cast your burdens on him because he cares for you. And so it had to be strong, knowing you did what you could through life for her comfort, ease, and peace until the end. God saw him, God saw and he knew, therefore we commend you to him who is able to comfort and cheer and will dry your tears and heal your broken heart if you will put your unwavering faith in him as we are praying for you and you must also pray for time and prayer will bring you peace. May God your hope and look upon look up on the hills where will come with your help. May God bless you and give you strength and courage. Reverend Darrell Fennell and the living Church. One thing I desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beautiful of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Psalms 27 and 4. Heaven will be sweeter and more beautiful, more to desire because of entrance through the shining gates of your love and loved one, Deacon Eric F. Stark, who left this earth on Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Persevere in prayer, relax and think of home going to our Father House of many mansions where our dear ones are waiting for us. Thank the Lord for his man, many countless blessings in the promise and answer to our prayers. The Lord truly cares and wants us to cast our weary souls upon him. Therefore, be it resolved that in the home home of March 25th of Deacon Eric Stowe, beloved husband, to the late minister time to see Stowe, Brown Stowe, and the beloved father to unique humans, Justin Brown Stowe and Naya Stowe, and beloved grandfather to Layla Milton humans and Caris humans, and the beloved son of Clinton Stowe Sr., and the son-in-law to Evangelist Geraldine Brown, and beloved brother to Clinton Stowe Jr., Stacy Stowe and Jawan Stowe, and all of the best selling Baptist Church express the deepest sympathy we feel personally and collectively to the family. It is our prayers that the loved ones of the late Deacon Everett so, rely upon the strength of the found only in the Lord of heaven and earth, realizing that the earth has no, has no sorrow which heaven cannot hear. Being in Christ, we have joy and assurance of knowing the purchase in the sight of the Lord in the death of the one of his saints. That's a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept on the father. Respectfully submitted, Elder Stephen Baker and Elder Tina Faith of pastors. After this, the three children will come up. Southside neighborhood wasn't easy, but it was Eric who welcomed me. For all the years, we became great friends. 
We see had some great times, along with some life tragedies. Eric was the best, best man at my wedding, and a year later, when my first son was born, it was Eric I called to celebrate. Eric, Big Rich, and I smoked cigars and toasted after night. So when I decided to ask Eric to be uh, my son's godfather, you know, Rich was not a man of God, and he didn't care for church. And it was Eric who said to Steve, don't let it be me. He said, let it be you. And we talked to Rich, and we asked him, would he be my son's godfather? And it made Rich happy. But there was one condition, and it was Eric Okuski. You got to go to church. And he actually got to go to church for the first time. And he had baptized. And he became my son's godfather. And one month later, he was rich. And I tell you, it was hard to be told on everybody. But it was a lot harder for Eric because him and Eric grew up together. And me and him were friends. And it took us time to deal with this. I'll tell you one night, this had to be late December or early January, and it was one of those heavy snowstorms. And not the one like we just had with all the winds and everything, it was just that heavy snow wave. You can actually hear the snow hitting the ground. And uh, I called him, and uh, we met up outside. It was about 9 30, 10 o'clock. I had a quart of old granddad burning. And we got together in the car. We sat up and started sitting and drinking. And we cried and we talked. And it was time when like, no cars came by, no clouds, nobody walked by. And we never just talked. We talked about life, family, death. It was rich scares. And we really didn't know what to do, but this is what kind of healed us. And we sat up there at almost three o'clock in the morning, just talking. Um, and probably would stay up there except for, but for Leon who walked by and came laughing at us. <laughs> you guys still sit down there and the snow had covered up to the door. And so when we decided to go in, it was funny because we there were very bulky at the time. And the watch the us try to climb out of that car and step out of the snow and fall and then we laughed at each other. <laughs> but that's just a good memory of that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Anyway, you know, after that, uh, things change. Things change. Eric began dating Tommy, and after you guys got married, and she was the love of his life. You know, we both had kids, family, work, so I didn't go apart. But not our friendship. When I lost my son, I was devastated. My mind and heart was broken. There was no words to heal, comfort, or console me. I had to be strong for my wife, and I felt lost. The only person that helped me was Eric. And it wasn't his words, it was just his presence. He'd come around and sit with me, and I would talk, and I would cry. He would just listen, and he would get on my hand. And grief is different for everyone, but it's time that helps. And sometimes things just need to be let out. And that's why it broke my heart that I couldn't do the same for my friend. When time it does, I saw the loss in his eyes and his mood, and I felt for him. To be honest, I can't remember if I called him or he called me, but he explained everything, everything that happened to him that day and everything at the hospital. And how the doctors told him that he was just so overwhelmed, he slumped to the floor and he cried. And I could feel his pain. And all I could tell them at the time was just go, go home and be with your kids and your family and go talk. The day after time was passing, I called him in the morning to see what I could do for my friend. That's maybe he ate. He did he said no. So I said, well, he said, I, I could take a tea. So I drove him and drove and we went to go get some tea. We came back. And we sat in my car. And the phone came. And Eric would answer it. And I figured, you know, give him some privacy, but Eric, he put it on the speaker so I could hear it. He put it on the dashboard. And it was people calling. 
and they were giving their condolences. You know, we saw and praises for time. And he's listening, but he's not really saying anything. So, but thank you. And I appreciate it. And I'm looking at my friend and I can see it in him. And, and then you get another phone call and it'd be the same thing. And I'm saying to myself, hey, I wonder why he's even going to listen to us. These people can crush him, but I guess he wanted to share it with him. And then I the worst thing is the hospital call. And I thought maybe they was going to ask him, you know, about what did you want to do, what your arrangements, what you want to do with Tommy. But it to me, it was like at the worst time, they were calling to ask her if he thought about trying to do anything. And I just looked and I looked at him, and that made it so real for him. That's what, and, and all of this talk and all of this love that he was getting, he actually just certified that she was gone. And I, I couldn't help him, and I tried. And he really didn't even know what to say to the person in the hospital, so I just told him, and please just tell him that you need to talk to the kids. And then we <coughs> talked to him later. So he hung up. He said, then someone else called. And then I saw a little, a little tear in his eyes, and I could see he was getting with the joint. So I told him, you know, I recorded that. And I can believe it just now. So. I don't know if I ever should and care to you know, and you don't have to sit down with a little cry, you know, if you did, that, that was a blessing. Because, mm -hmm. you know, every time you ask him, Eric would tell you he was okay. He said, I'm okay, I'm okay. You know, but if you saw that late night, and you saw the late post, you know, I don't know if you know what Eric was, sometimes I walk in the street two, three o'clock in the morning, he was lost, he was hurt. And as much love as we have for him, it was really just nothing that could replace what he was missing. And I feel it. You know, it's like everyone doesn't get to share love like in the time. But to have a good love, a special love, and I'm glad that he had that in his life. And you know, whenever I come out of my house, I look across the street. First thing I look up was that was so I look to see Tommy on the step. I look to see Eric up on the step. And you know what? I, I still do. And it's going to take a minute for me not to. You know, the, the, day, of, the day before Eric's passing, I came out of the house. I saw his car, and then I, Eric, we waved. You know, we both went to our cars and got a mask, and we joined up. We talked for a little. I told him I had an errand to run. And I said, I hit you up when I get back. I was always afraid. But lately, we didn't do that. We were saying we wouldn't get together. But this day we did. I came back, and he came out, and we talked. And the first time we, we talked, and we laughed. And you know, we talked about March Madness pitch. We talked about the Giants. We talked about don't we fish you and, and how many times. Because of the pandemic, we couldn't. And for the first time in, in a while, he looked like Eric. You know, his shoulders were lifted. He had a smile on his face. He was making jokes, and I, I felt good. So, but then I watched him walk away. He walked away like he's a big old Eric. So the next day, when I saw that call from Blake, I, I my mind, I'm listening, no, 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 and I was there. I was just with you yesterday. I saw you, you were good, you were okay. And then I said, David Blake's just calling me because he's trying to get in on the fishing trip. <laughs> and then he told me it was being messed to the hospital. And I just, I went young. I was scared. I just started praying. And I just started praying. But like I said before, you know, none of us were replaced with his mission. It breaks my heart. You go in the beat with your child and your mother. And I say, rest in peace to the Lord for you. I love you. And I'm going to end this with the words that you gave me at my wedding. Maybe not as eloquent as you said. And Eric and Tanya, this, this is what my, this is what my buddy wanted. Eric and Tanya, 
you're like a pair of chopsticks. One is to smoke them without the other. So I'm not trying to say, God bless you. I love it. And how oh, bless you. Can we celebrate the children as they come forward? Let's celebrate them. They're going to need our prayers as they come forward. Now, I must say, anybody that comes up, we haven't gotten to the word yet, and I am governed by the family and the undertakers, and we are really pressed for time. So, I want to hear the family and then. I said everything that I had to say while he was here. <laughs> as far as I know he's happy because he's a mommy. But I, it, it just happened so soon. A little too soon, but he was hurting more here than we knew. I just want to say that we love you. We thank you because you worked so hard to give us everything and it doesn't go unnoticed. And I'm glad I got to tell you that at mommy's funeral because you deserve to hear it. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Ain't no secret. Um, Eric wasn't really my biological father. Um, I had been with my mom. I was young, but I can see. I'm still observing. I see where my kids get it from, especially my youngest. Just watch everything I do. Even being little, I already understand what's going on, but I can see that there's a guy in my mother's life, and there's another guy that's supposed to be my father. But unlike the times now, I never heard my mother talk about my so called father, but so it's like my hurt, my friend, my friend, all right. So now, just come from home. So he's outside with me, he's trying to ride a bike. For his birthday party, he brought my uncle, which is a turtle.
sad. It's more like it's a love story. Yeah. It's rough because it was never said that only time you said was when you went to work. And I used to ask dad, like, how do you hang out with mommy all day? <laughs>
That's her reaction and my dad's reaction. I had to be there for them. I tried. But Dad, I want to tell you, you were a great son. I had so many people come on me crying. And that day it happened, I cried until I heard somebody say, that the time is stuck by hand out, carry three four, she grabbed his hand and took him with her. I'll be honest, the minute I heard that, I had no more fears. I had no more son. But this is a true love story. To, to see my brother. The, the stuff that he was putting on social media, and I couldn't help him, that tore me apart. So I had people calling me crying, and I'm just talking to them like, I'm good, I'm okay. And I would tell them, part of my time, reaching out and taking her hand. And I would say, listen, I don't know if I'm going to have a Florida every moment. <laughs> you go to YouTube and check out this But um, I'm all right. It's not maybe two or three days before his uh, birthday. I was having my moments. I had my moment in the bar twice. But uh, I'm okay with it because my mother, you know, my mother passed away when I was 15. My sister was 16. Eric was 21. My father worked in New Jersey overnight shift. So you think about this. Nobody's in your house. It's the 80s and South Jamaica Queens. I can do anything I want. But because my father raised him at the age of 21, 22, that was my dad. When my father wasn't home, I had to answer to him. So, the complete man that I am is for my father and my brother raising me. And this is what I have a presence anybody know, I'm hard on you because that's how I was raised. And it's not what I was It was never meant in any disrespect or anything. This is how I was raised. Let me tell you one thing. First time cutting was because of my brother. <laughs> Dr. J was retired. It was the last game at the Madison Square Garden. Hey, you want to go to the game tomorrow? Okay. So he called out for work. And I went up to the garden. We met and watched the game. And true tradition, Giants won the Super Bowl. He takes his, <laughs> he takes his sword out of the school. <laughs> so. Just so much. And the big world, that is, I just wish and I hope I'm happy. And I'm mean. And when people were calling me crying and I wasn't crying, I would tell them their job here is done. It's, it's, it's done. All we have to do now is grab that branch. And let that branch you let each and every one of us grow onto our tree. And spread what? That's, this is love right here. This is love. It's high school classmates here. I have family from Alabama that just called. Love you, baby. Thank you so much, family. How do you sound? Just like me. Yeah. <laughs> it's my first time hearing his voice, but oh my God, I'm like, he's a ventriloquist. Like, hey, you man. You really the man if you pull that off. Here's what we're going to do because we are now past our time. We're going to have the Ministry of Music. I want you to take your program. In the middle of it is an obituary. As the minister, uh, Glenn Gibson comes with the Ministry of Music. I'm going to introduce the speaker now. Focus on the obituary. 
as you hear this musical interlude in honor and celebration of Deacon Eric Fitzgerald. I would have picked on him the whole time. Like Fitzgerald. Uh, Fitzgerald, 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 Fitzgerald. There is a friend of Deacon Eric Stone who has fast become my brother. He outranks me. He's more polite than me. I don't know if he's more handsome, but he's more handsome than I am. He's known Eric since they were childhood friends. He is going to come after Minister Glenn Gibson gives us this music ministry in sermonic solo form. You will hear the Reverend Dr. Reverend Doctor, he is going to come and minister the word of God to us. As you hear this song, look at the obituary, check out the acknowledgments, and that's how we can speed up time. God bless you, Mr. Thank you. 
baseball, football, whatever it was at Ajax Park. That's what it was. Amen. But we met one another there and it was a friendship that never ended. We may have distanced and separated at times, but whenever we got back together, it was as if we just saw one another yesterday. Amen. And that's what true friendship is really all about. Amen. 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 First, I want to give honor to the prince of this house, Bishop Carter. Amen. In his absence, as well as to the officiating officer, Pastor Stephen Baker, as well as Pastor Tim Baker, and also, more importantly, to the family of my friend and brother. Amen. I'm 
I'm here just for a few moments, just for a few moments, amen, to talk to you about this celebration. And it is a celebration whether you want to believe it or not. Amen. As you look at your program, the cover of our program says Homegoing Celebration for Eric Fitzgerald Stone. If you would, with a moment with me, consider the fact that this is not a homegoing celebration, but this is actually a homecoming celebration. <laughs> You may ask, why would you say that, preacher? Well, a homegoing is because you're leaving. And when people leave, there's normally sadness and disappointment. But Eric is actually coming home because we believe the word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Eric is on his way home because he believed the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we come before you now to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of your power and your spirit. Lord, I pray that you take me out of self. Allow your precious spirit to dwell within. Lord, that your people hear not me, but they use me now in your service. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. A scripture I'd like for you to look at, if you don't mind, just for a moment. I'm only going to be a moment. Amen comes from Job chapter 14 and chap chapter 14, verse 14. And it simply says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my heart service, I will wait till my change comes. I'm sure that Pastor Bakers both can tell you that Eric was most definitely a hard worker. Amen. There was no question. I'm sure there was nothing that was needed or necessary at the Beth Salem Church that Eric could do that he did not get done. Amen. But the question here this morning simply is, if a man dies, will he live again? Well, to me, that determined that is determined by your view of death, Amen. the way you live your life. The world often looks at death as the end of life. And this view of death has a way of dictating the direction and the goals towards temporary rather than towards eternal rewards. The Christian perspective of death is quite different from this. How do you know? Well, Philippians chapter 1 verse 21 says, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yes, sir. So that lets us know that to the non-believers, these words are at the very least meaningless and perhaps even border on depressing or morbid. Or even in saying this view is accurate when we view death as the end. Talk to but today, but today is a day of celebration, a day of joy, even in the midst of loss. Why? Because of our difference of perspective on our view on the matter of death. Be sure there is and will be sadness. There will be loneliness, sorrow, and heartbreak today and for the days to come. Simply because of the loss of your father, your son, your brother, your relative, whomever he may have been to you. Yes, your heart will be broken. Yes, there will be sadness. But your view of death will be determined by the way you live your life. Though your loss is very real today, I don't want to belittle it, but your loss is real. Your perspective on death should be filled with joy and hope and anticipation for what is to come. For well, the Christian perspective that allows to look at death in the face and not be afraid of it. I mean, well, I'm sure that when death angel showed up at Eric's door, though he may have been sitting in his living room and his mother-in-law thought that things just weren't going right. I imagine that when that angel showed up, Eric said, just be a moment and get myself together. And that's when they took him to the hospital. And I believe that when he got there and the dead angel sat on the end of the thing, Eric said that I'm okay now because I know where I'm going. Because I know that my redeemer is. I know that where I'm going. Because I know that my father is preparing a 
place for them. For the word of God says that in my father's house are many mansions. And when I go there, you will go with me. I'm here this morning to tell you that Eric was all right then because he knew that he wasn't and it was not just the Lord that was preparing a place for him. But he knew that Tanya had all that gone on and she was helping the Lord that place that God had promised him. He knew that all the word that he heard, all the scriptures that he read, all the prayers that he prayed, that he was about to get to that place. God had prepared for him. And because God prepared it, he wasn't worried. He was not afraid because he understood that this would not be a home going celebration, but it was a homecoming celebration. You ever been to the high school or college homecoming? And there's always a celebration. Everybody's yelling, everybody's screaming, and they're screaming for joy. I could imagine that Eric got to where the Lord had prepared for him, and he began to scream for joy. He began to shout for joy. I believe that he saw Tanya and his heart rejoiced because he got there. The Father had promised him he was ready because the question was finally answered. If a man dies, will he live again? Yes, he will. Why? Because my father said in my father's house, If a man dies, will he live again? Yes, he will. Because the Lord has made it ready. If a man dies, will he live again? Mary can answer the question today. Yes, I will. I'm alive now and forevermore. I'm alive now and forevermore. If a man dies, I believe that Eric is rejoicing right now as he's sitting at the feet of Jesus and he's blessed. I believe that Eric is rejoicing right now because he's got back to his love one. I believe that Eric is happy right now because he's right back next, sitting next to Tanya all over again. I believe Eric is happy right now. Will a man die? Yet he, will he live again? When a man dies, will he live again? The answer today is yes. But that's only if you know Jesus for yourself. You have to have a relationship with the master. I know somebody said this is a homecoming service, but I want you to know that today you can still meet Jesus. Amen. Yes, I'm offering Christ to you right now. If you don't know him for yourself, if you want to know who Jesus is, the opportunity is yours right now to turn your heart, your life over to him and to say, Lord, here am I. Make me what I ought to be. Use me in your service. I'm seeking your salvation, Lord, because I want you to change my life. I can't do it by myself because the enemy has too much power. But I know that under God's power, I can do all things through Christ. That's true. So if that's somebody is you, we invite you to accept and believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for all of you. Amen. I know we all are going to miss Eric, but we can know for sure that he is truly living again. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, I'm going to ask my ushers first to get in place, get in position. I need a couple of ushers on the corners here. We're about to give over to our undertakers, and I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. <laughs> Um, we're going to go around to the left side. That's your right, my left. If you are a family, I mean, if you're a friend, we'll start on this side. We're going to ask our undertakers to come forward. They will give us instruction, and then the ushers will comply with their instructions. Amen. 
Let's thank God for these uh, these folks that have come. Holy God bless you. It all though began to here today, not to mourn or to sorrow as those that had no hope, but we came to thank God for our beloved, Eric Fitzgerald's son. Amen? Amen. Amen. And personally, we know Eric and I met in 1977 as we entered Hillcrest High School. I am part of the class of 1980. We have some of our classmates with us here today, as well as our musician, um, Brother Glenn is the mother of one of Eric's classmates as well. So we give our love and our condolences to you. We know that you're in our hearts and our prayers. We thank God today for officiating us in the past of Eric, our beloved friend, Pastor Stephen Baker, and his beautiful wife, Pastor Tina Baker. We thank God for this house where this Chicago Carter was the pastor. And to our eulogists, we thank you for reminding us that yes, we will. Live again. Amen? At the end of this service, we will be traveling to the Pine River Memorial Park, which is located in Farmingdale, New York. I ask that those who will be traveling with the family that you see one of the um, staff from the Jay Force to Home Streamer Home, and they will give you a sticker to affix to your vehicle. I ask that those who will not be traveling that you please pray for two things. One, that God will continue to be the strength that the family needs during this time, and that two, they will have traveling nurses. Center. Now, raising the church, we were all part of the usher board, so the usher and me is running up. We were running a little late, so I'm going to ask that you please follow the direction of the ushers. Greet the family at a later time. I know you want to stop and give your condolences and love, but we're rushing. We're going to take the A train. Amen? Yeah. So please come forward at this time and pay your respects to my beloved Eric. God bless you. Thank God for the Undertakers on my right hand side, starting at the rear. If you want to come and view, you're going to go this left side. We're going to open up those center doors. If you are not coming up to see the body, please walk directly at it. Then first, start from the rear. Yes, ma'am. Let it get Let's get them out. Let's go. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Thanks. Direct them to the front. If they're not coming up directly, straight out. We'll greet outside, Saints. We'll, we'll greet outside. We want to bring people in. If you're coming up, come up now. Please. Please hold outside. Please. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, Lord, am I? Oh, fly away. You can dust your nose from outside in now. Right. Okay. Send them straight down the middle aisle from outside. We don't have time for greeting, we can greet outside. God bless you. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Anybody else from outside? Uh, we'll fly away. Ushers, if you can help me now with the family starting at the rear. Uh, fly away. Thank you for indulging me. You're wonderful. Fly away. When I die. Hallelujah. 
But I'm going to ask everybody in the vestibule to leave the vestibule. You have to go down the stairs. We are late. We have to go down the stairs. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I get it, man. <laughs> 